security is not a one day of job. Security is a journey and continuous process it will run. The biggest cyber attacks it happens in the healthcare in India as well as in abroad also. The first threat is the ransomware attack, then phishing scam, insider threats, medical device hacking, DDoS, and unsecured IOMT devices. Majority of the organizations, they have their own network on-prem. So in that cases, the <laughs> hackers, they use the IDS, or IPS, or DDoS, yeah. attacks they, they do it. Hello and welcome to CIU News. I am Kushpa Soni, your host for the broadcast and the founder of CIU News. This is our exclusive interview series on the topic of IT security in the healthcare industry. And I'm very delighted to invite our guest for today's episode. We have Dr. Sushil Mehar, Chief Information Officer at AIMS. She has been with AIMS for uh, more than 31 years and he's been driving uh, the entire digital transformation, managing the entire IT segment for AIMS. Sir, thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview with us. And I'm really looking forward to, you know, talk to you and understand what are the strategies that you know, you've put together, uh, what are your thought process in terms of the information technology security in the healthcare industry specifically? Yeah, thanks for inviting to your wonderful session. Earlier, the healthcare was not that much of important for the cyber hackers. Right. Now, during the COVID, it has started in low scale. Right now, it is gone in a high scale. If you compare to the any other domains, it has observed that uh, during the last two years, the cyber attack has been gone up uh, exponential as compared to the other domains. So during this period of time, the biggest cyber attacks it happens in the healthcare in India as well as in abroad also. The, basically, the first threat is the ransomware attack, then phishing scam, insider threats, medical device hacking, DDoS, and unsecured IOMT devices. Yeah. Each of the threats poses the unique challenge when they try to protect themselves. And the ransomware attacks in the healthcare, the organization has 4.62 million per incident. It has been spent and it has been given to ransomware people. So right now, when we talk about it, if we talk to a, any hackers, ethical hackers, you will ask that I need a hacker, medical record of a particular patient or a particular person, they charge more than your bank accounts. This is the trend which is coming up, means healthcare record is more vulnerable than any other records. And uh, so what do you think, what are the best practices that needs to be implemented in terms of uh, IT security, you know, especially in the healthcare industry? See, social engineering is the first of all. If you do any sort of things. Earlier what it happens, the people, they think of it, in healthcare, nobody has the interest to hack the medical records. Right now, it is more vulnerable. Right. And the users, they work in such a pattern that culture has to be needed to be changed. To changing the cultures, the two things you have to do it. You have to do the continuous training and demonstration programs. And you have to give a order from the top of the management that you have to follow these guidelines. Right. What it happens, I'm talking about in healthcare. If you do a lot of restrictions, to assess a medical records. It will be very difficult to the doctors and nurses to assess the medical records. And when the people and the service provider is struggling to get the access to the medical records, it will be a big problem to the organizations. That's why now people are in between whether they'll go for a robust security system or whether they'll go for a open systems. Now it is a debatable situation. There is no guidelines has come up to how to protect medical records or medical informations of the patients as well as the healthcare service provider. So that's why the best practices, what it's supposed to be. First of all, you have to understand that what is the list of the assets and who has owned that one, how it has been used and how it will be 
protect it. Right. Then you have to look out that identify the potential security threats to the assets. Right. Yeah, that has to be identified. May be taken to a some professional IT or cyber security persons who has good exposures and look for a vulnerability in your IT and data systems. Okay, the vulnerability what it is that lot of data is available in the, uh, in the healthcare domains. You have to identify that which data are more important and how much it has to be secure and identify the data the red blue yellow and, and green okay the red means it is very vulnerable so you, you need a lot of protection on this okay in this way you will define it then you can get a visualization that what are the solutions required for what assessing to the uh, risk of the exploitation by the threats mm -hmm. you have to assess all these things in regular basis as per the government guidelines your certain has already been given the guideline and new DPDP has come also. That has mm -hmm. to we have to look into it. Right. And another one is that determine the impact of security risks. Mm -hmm. What impact it will come up if there is a risk and if it is being compromised, then what to do? Right. And and evaluate the existing controls. You have to evaluate the continuous process. It might be every three months or four months, and propose new measures because. The attackers are more highly equipped than us. New, new methods they are inventing and they are attacking to the different organizations okay. to hack it. So it is a big challenge. Always you have to be aware. You have to update your knowledge on a regular basis. Your security personnel supposed to be always be in a high alert. New attacks which is coming on a different organization, you have to learn it. Any huge cases, when you are getting it, any attacks, that has to be studied seriously and implement it as early as possible. And review the results and security proposals. Always continuous process reviewing is supposed to be there. Otherwise, right. what it happens, new technology has come up, you do not know. New attacks is coming up, you do not know. So it may be happened to your organizations. So right. that's why uh, you have to use these methods to do it. Correct. Right. Yeah. And uh, so when we talk about innovation in the healthcare sector, so what are the applications that can be looked at securing? See, in the healthcare, you are using application. Transformation in healthcare has, it has increased multiple number of folds. Yeah. But they are lacking that application, how to be secure. Right. And always you are very easy to use it, the APIs. And yeah. API is not properly secured. And it is a more vulnerable area. One supposed to be, be secure your API properly. Correct. Another one is that secure the development, develop. Otherwise, these are the main two targets, which is the looking after by the hackers. Correct. Another one is the application security testing has to be. Mm -hmm. Recently, one attack it has come up. SQL injection has uh, put at it, and they have stolen the data. Right. So these sort of things you have to test properly just like SAST or DAST, you can use it. Correct. Second part is that majority of the organizations, they have their own network on-prem. So in that cases, the hackers, they use the IDS, uh, IPS, or DDoS. Yeah. Attacks, they, they do it. And you supposedly must have GTNA, mm -hmm. Zero Trust Network Access. It is supposed to be definitely you must have. Otherwise, you will be in trouble. Because right. hackers are, there's the two way people, they come. One is the spamware, another one is the GTNA through your yeah. network. Another one is that everybody has are using the email. Many spamware or phishing, it is coming through the mail. So that's why what you have to do it. You have to use the security, the web security and the email security must have to be implemented in the organizations. Correct. Another one is the users and the device security. That yeah. is the identity management and protection. And that is a big challenge in the organizations. In the healthcare organizations, the identity is changing very fast. The rule is changing yeah. very fast. To manage continuous process, that is a very difficult task for you. Somebody is in the morning shift. After three days, he will go for the evening shift. Another after three days, in the night shift. So this kind of management is very difficult. Another one is you can do it. You have to use the EDR, XDR, or MDR. Yeah. 
Yeah. When the attack has come up and you have identified from your SOC, yeah. at the times, how to contain that one, how to manage that one, you should not move any other places. Right. So, so that that is also one of the important things we are supposed to have. Right. Then do the classification of the data already I have told you. Then DLP has to be, then encryption of the data. This is a part of the, these activities. Because security is not a one day of job. Security is a journey and continuous process it will run. Right. And if you tell that everything is secure and nothing to do it, it is a wrong thought if somebody is thinking of it. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a journey, right? I always say that cybersecurity is a journey because hackers are getting more and more sophisticated and smarter in terms of the way they do attacks. And um, similarly, CISOs yeah. are working into uh, towards getting their game up and you know continuously monitoring, continuously keeping a track of it. So yeah. it's been a great discussion, sir. Uh, any other points that you would like to add for CISOs who would watch our interview or our viewers? Any any additional uh, pointers that you might want to add? I want to add the visibility. Yeah. Yeah, threat intelligence. People are yeah. using you know, threat intelligence. Yeah. And the SOAR, uh, AR is also, uh, it can be used. Because threat intelligence is definitely one supposed to have. Because uh, malware which is coming up, what is their uh, intention to do it? What is the, what yes, they are looking towards it. So that has to be watched by the threat intelligence very intelligently. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, second part is that manage security service, the SOC services. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Audit and compliance. Yeah. That is also required. And yeah. incident response. The, earlier also I have discussed about the incident response. How fast you have to respond if the incident has come up. Okay. How to contain it and how to isolate it. We should not hamper to my business yeah. continuity programs. Right. Otherwise, your whole system will stop to work on it. And another one is the security awareness training. Security awareness training, continuous process, it has to be communicated to the users. Yeah. yeah. And if you have a cloud, then, then two things you have to look into it. The cloud security posture and assessment is always required. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Then cloud visibility, micro segmentations, then cloud workload protections, this might be useful things for the absolutely. organizations. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. I think it's very, very important now because I think healthcare as an industry has really transformed post-COVID. And that is one of the reasons the digital transformation that happened post-COVID has really, really got an attention for the sector. So, yeah, uh, very well covered, uh, Dr. Sushil. And it was great having this conversation with you. Thank you so much for taking out the time and uh, joining us. And I will really look forward to having many more interactions with you where we can get uh, deeper into various topics of cloud security or zero trust. So I look forward to having more conversations and then keeping in touch. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank, yeah, you. thank you.